Hey guys, so I thought we'd do something a little bit different today. I wanted to take a moment to sit back and reflect and kind of just have an open and honest discussion about me hitting Twitch partner. And if you guys aren't familiar, maybe you're new to the channel. We actually started this YouTube channel around the time that I hit partner. While it's been lovely to be back on YouTube, I have spent a pretty considerable amount of time grinding out the Twitch side of things. I use the term grind kind of lovingly. I, I honestly love what I do but it is a grind and we'll get into that. But I spent a good four years just about to get partner on Twitch. And I kind of just want to discuss how I got there, what it took to get there. And maybe if you're also trying to aim for that goal, get some insight from somebody who's gotten it. And six months after it really hasn't, you know, been life changing by any means, but I'm also very proud to be where I am. So let's get into it. Now I gotta come clean and admit that this is a video that's been kicking around in my head a while. I feel like I say that often, but in this case, it has pretty much been stirring in my head since I got partner. And if you guys aren't aware, I got partner back in February of this year, 2024. And I just wanna extend a huge thank you to the people that watch not only in here, but obviously the Twitch as well. I'm just so grateful to have a community and to be able to stream as much as I do. I know it's been a long, long road. It took me over four years to hit this point, but I did kind of want to peel back the curtains a little bit and let people aware to really just what it took to get here because it was not easy. I think there's this misconception that streaming is easy. And maybe if you're in the top like 0.001%, it gets pretty easy. You can basically just go live and do whatever you want and people show up and give you money. For the vast majority of folk, that's not the reality. I think I am probably more the reality. You know, I have a lovely dedicated viewer base that does tune in, many of which tune in almost every day, sometimes every day, some of which tune in for hours on end. But what I do admittedly is kind of niche. I'm no Asmongold. I'm no Ludwig. I'm, I'm none of these giant streamers. Ultimately, I knew that going in and for those that are unaware I actually started streaming soon after I graduated from college just kind of to try it out I started actually in December of 2019 so I've been pretty consistently doing this since then and have not let up too much now admittedly when I started I was kind of just doing it like once a week, twice a week. I was dipping my toes in. For those that want context, even to get affiliate, which if you're not familiar with what a Twitch affiliate is, it's the tier below partner where you can start to monetize the channel. You get subscriptions, ads can play on the channel, those sorts of things. Basically, you have to stream for a certain amount of hours in a month, which it's a pretty low number, a certain amount of days that's once again, pretty low. And the, the big hurdle for a lot of people is you have to average three viewers over the course of your streams in that month. While that may sound like nothing, if you're starting from zero, it's really hard to get those first few people. So in my personal experience, it took me just about four months to even hit affiliate. It is really tough in those beginning few months. Ultimately, what kept me through and going is that I was just passionate about what I was doing. I really had a lot of fun doing it, getting to talk with others that enjoy the kind of things that I enjoy. You know, retro gaming is kind of a niche and it continues to be. I'm grateful that I've been able to grow my channel in such a way that it is pretty sustainable at this point, but it is a niche and it's going to be slow going to start and it's going to take a while. Like anything in life, the best things come to those that are patient and that wait and that see the long game. You really have to view things far out, zoom out, get a, get a big Vista vision picture of what this is going to look like. Because if you're in it for the long haul, you know, you're going to be willing to put the time in. For a long time, I had to juggle other jobs. I had to do other things. You know, I door dashed for a while. I worked a number of other jobs while juggling Twitch. And you just, you make it work so that you can do it. And luckily, it worked out in the long run for me. That isn't to say that you should just stream and hope that lightning strikes because that does not work either. I think one of the big things that needs to be done is... 
I, I don't like the term, but networking essentially, and just connecting with other people that are into what you're into. Luckily, in my case, in the Twitch retro scene, there are a lot of other streamers that are pretty chill people that have similar audience bases, similar sizes, people that are into the kind of stuff that you're into. And just connecting with those people does grow kind of a community around you and around others, and you become part of something larger. It's not just about your stream and your success. It's, a, it's about the community as a whole, just creating these groups of like-minded people that all love the same kind of hobbies and interests. And that is really what's gonna get you far. Now, there's a whole bunch of other things that can go into your success or failure on Twitch. There is an element of luck. I definitely don't want to sit here and say that luck has not played any sort of factor. I don't feel like in the grand scheme of things, I've been all that lucky, but there has been some luck, right? I, there's been luck enough to get where I have gotten. You know, that in addition to perseverance, just putting in the long hours because you love it. There's a lot of different factors, but I do think if all you're going to do is sit and just stream six, eight, ten hours and you're streaming to like one or two people the entire time, you're going to have a hard time. I think you got to put in a little more legwork. And that is probably one of the biggest things to me that set me apart and I think has contributed to the success of my channel is that I really, after a while, when I realized I wanted to take this seriously, I sat down and went, how do I make this more entertaining for people? People. How can I get people in that otherwise maybe just wouldn't watch me sit and play through a long play of a game? I have done a lot of behind the scenes work, just brainstorming, throwing ideas at the wall to see what sticks. That is going to also definitely affect how you're able to grow on the platform. And I think being able to innovate, being able to try new things, doing things and offering forms of content that others aren't is one of the biggest things you can do for yourself. In my specific situation, that ended up being kind of as the role of a retro variety streamer and a sampler and kind of just like a, a game historian in a sense. A lot of my streams nowadays tend to have us sample a whole bunch of different games. Say, you know, we choose a platform for a night and we go through maybe Maybe 10 games, 15 games that night. And, you know, I've also got this wheel over here that I often spin that you may have seen in some of the videos. You know, part of it is like gamifying the stream. Ultimately, the interactive element of Twitch, because that is what is going to set you apart, right? What sets Twitch apart from just putting a video out on YouTube, right? It's the instant interaction. And that is another thing that I figured out, you know, maybe not incredibly early on. I always have been attentive to chat and the conversational aspect of Twitch, but I really got into, okay, how can we, how can we go further than that? How can I get viewers to be able to do even more, which is what ultimately got me going with Streamloots, which is a great source for streamers that want to add some extra interaction. Imagine essentially the channel points that Twitch has, but like times a thousand. They're essentially these little card packs that you can buy. I've taken it upon myself to basically create like a whole card games essentially is what I've done. That I think was one of the biggest booms I have seen on my channel. Pairing that with the retro variety aspect, I started adding timers to games. People could manipulate the timer with these cards. You know, they could flip my controller. I've got audio cards that let people play sound clips. You know, it is a monetizable thing. Honestly, it saved my stream. I don't think I'd still be here at least full-time there's no way I would have been able to swing this full-time otherwise I know we were kind of all over the place in this video but I hope that gives you guys some insight I guess really the ultimate takeaway here is that you really gotta love what you're doing here and you gotta be able to do just about anything to make your time on the platform sustainable you know I'm constantly looking for new ideas constantly trying to find ways to make streams more interactive, get people more involved. I think it's also important too that you stay true to your passion. 
because people can sense when you're doing something just for the sake of doing it. I am very careful about that. Even though I stream a ton, I try to go out of my way to make sure I'm still doing things that bring me joy and contribute to my passion and excitement because that excitement can be very contagious, right? People go on Twitch to get that excitement and to share the excitement and the enjoyment and just have a good time. And ultimately, that's the most important part. So if you can swing it full time, that's an even bigger bonus. You know, there's been a lot of sacrifices, but I wouldn't trade it for the world. So, hey guys, Future Kyle here. Just want to quickly interject and mention that we hit YouTube partnership this last week. We got accepted. I can't believe how fast we got here. As somebody that's been grinding Twitch out for so long, it is super humbling and I'm super grateful that we got to this point in like six months. It's absolutely wild. So thank you all for being so receptive to the content and being a wonderful community. I really love being back on YouTube. That being said, now that we're partnered, there is a join button below the videos. There's a couple tiers of membership. It's a monthly membership and it gets you some extra little fun goodies, including emotes and access to community only, member only posts and polls that'll be coming up soon. Help guide the future of the channel. And in addition, the higher tier gets you some extra bonus video content, which will be for members only, just as my deepest thanks and gratitude for the support. Hopefully you guys like what we have cooking up. Just want to thank you all again, extend my absolute humblest thanks and gratitude. You guys rock. And with that, let's get back to the video. Anyways, guys, that is my story on my path to partnership on Twitch. Hopefully this gave you guys some insight. I know I've seen some other videos talking about Twitch partnership and success on Twitch in general. Hopefully I brought an interesting perspective. I think I hit some points that I've I've personally not heard anybody else really stress as much as they maybe should. And I hope this was informative. Thank you guys for watching and see y'all soon. Hopefully I brought an interesting perspective. I think I hit some points that I've, I've personally not heard anybody else really stress as much as they maybe should.